here yet? No. A what? Let's take our psalm books to page number 44, When We All Get to Heaven. In your Heavenly Highway hymn books tonight, page number 44. We'll start there and then work our way back. Page number 44, page 44, when we all get to heaven. Page number 44, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all Shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, one day of blessing that will be. When we all singing page number 207 sweet by and by page number 207 <laughs> page number 207 there's a land that is fairer than day and by faith we can see
good it's on some meat and not going to let you come right on. And uh, then at 7.30, they'll gong you. And uh, those that are listening online, we're glad you're listening. And uh, we got prayer meeting at 7.30, so we'll get up. But you help him preach tonight. Pray for him while he preaches. Yes, please. I need prayer. That's for, that's for sure. Uh, Don asked me when he walked in, he said, you got something ready? I said, of course. I said, if you'd asked me that at 2 o'clock this morning, I wouldn't have answered you. Because I woke up about 1.30. I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got up, and I started going over the message I had that I thought I was going to preach. And I knew I wouldn't have much time, so I started timing myself. I went through it. And if everything went all right, it was going to take about 25 or 30 minutes. I said, Lord, I don't want to cut that message short. So he laid this message on my heart. It's a lot shorter message, but it is sweet. The title is simply The Cross, Jesus and the Cross. And our text is taken from 1 Corinthians the first chapter, and I'm going to read 17 through 24. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. I need the power of God tonight while I preach this message. Because if I don't have the power of God, it's not going to do a bit of good. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews required a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God in the wisdom of God. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now, and we ask for your help to preach this message that you gave me. I need the power of your Holy Spirit tonight on, on my life, on my preaching. And we just pray... Dear God, that you'll help me preach with clarity. We just ask these things in your precious name. Amen. We are living in a day with the message of the cross and the message of the church is changing. Churches and even whole denominations are moving away from the old message of salvation through the blood of Jesus and are moving toward a message of salvation through social activity and good works. One of the major lessons which we must never forget is the vain and destructive nature of idolatry the worship of idols and false gods. This evil has destroyed thousands spiritually. And literally, it led to the destruction and captivity of a whole nation. Therefore, we must recognize this awful potential in our own hearts as Christians. Paul warned believers of this. It was a problem to Israel. It was a problem in Paul's day. And yes, it's still a problem today. 
The only difference is it is cleverly disguised. The old bloody message of the cross is quickly being replaced by a bloodless message that lacks power, lacks conviction, and lacks hope. Ephesians 1, 7 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Colossians 1, 14 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Instead of hearing the devastating but life-changing news that men are sinners, people hear a message that tells them, I'm okay, you're okay, because at one point in your life you said you believed in God. It takes more than just believing. Are you living for God? Is your life showing that you're living for God? Or do you love the world more than you do God? My friends, social activity and good works won't get the job done. We have to apply the blood of Jesus to our lives. We have to believe what God's Word teaches us. Not just parts of it, but all of it. We don't get to pick and choose what verses we want to live by. We don't get to pick and choose what Bible we want to use. There's only one true God and there's only one true Word of God. I don't know why people can't understand that. We have to believe all of it or none of it. This evening, I would like to restate the old message. I would like to remind everyone in the building and everyone listening about what happened that day when the Lord Jesus died on that old rugged cross at Calvary. (laughs) Because it was that event which took place at Calvary 2,000 years ago that altered the future for every person in this building and everyone listening and everyone who places their faith in Jesus who died there that day. I'd like to take you back to a little hill just outside the gates of the city of Jerusalem where we will encounter an event that purchased and provided salvation for every person who believes and accepts on faith, repents, and confesses that they are a sinner and asks God to have mercy on me as sinner. Yes, it's a shocking message. A brutal, awful death was experienced there on that old rugged cross. The death Christ died on the cross was one of absolute torture. You and I cannot even begin to imagine all the pain Jesus was enduring for our sins. Allow me to refresh your mind about the terrible price Jesus paid for us as he suffered for our sins that day. Matthew 27, 26 says Jesus was scourged. What does that mean? He was whipped with a whip that had metal objects. I don't know what kind of objects, but they simply, when it hit you, it tore the flesh right from your body. Luke 22 Verse 63 and 64 says that Jesus was mocked and beaten. Matthew 27, 30 says that Jesus was spit upon. Have you ever been spit upon? I don't know if I could even take spitting. 
if somebody spit on me. I don't know if I could take it. Matthew 27, verse 26 and 29 says that Jesus was stripped and mocked. Matthew 27, 35 says that Jesus was crucified and nailed to the cross. These truths don't even begin to scratch the surface of what Jesus suffered for you and me. To hear the details of Jesus' death on the cross, yes, it is disturbing, but it's necessary that the truth be proclaimed and must be heard before there can be salvation. Friends, there is only one way for you to get to God, and that is by the way of the cross. There is no salvation apart from faith in the work of Jesus on Calvary. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 1 John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The message is necessary that the truth be proclaimed and must be heard. The cross, there's no salvation apart from faith in the work of Jesus on Calvary's cross. Because of Calvary, I'm not the man I used to be. Because of Calvary, I don't go to the places I used to go. Because of Calvary, I don't say the things I used to say. Because of Calvary, I'm a child of God. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Jesus reached down and pulled me out of that miry clay, broke those chains of bondage I was in, set my feet on a solid rock, and I'm still on that solid rock today. I will not. I shall not be moved. I'm committed. I've made up my mind that I'm going through. I'm going to finish my race. Jeremy preached here a couple weeks ago. You got to have your mind made up before you're thrown into the fire. You got your mind made up tonight. Are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve the world? Yes, it's a simple message. One of the problems with the modern churches, I believe, is that they have tried to attach too many conditions to salvation. However, the Bible is very clear when it tells us that the way to be saved is for the sinner to repent and accept by faith what the Bible teaches about Jesus in his atoning death on Calvary's cross. It's not about you quitting your sins. It's not about you turning over a new leaf. It's about Jesus. It was about Jesus 2,000 years ago. It's about Jesus today. And it will always be about Jesus. Amen. Have you placed your faith in Jesus and him alone for your salvation? Are you keeping your eyes on Jesus? The purpose of the cross was about making a statement since way back in the Old Testament the Lord has been telling us of his love for his people. However, in Christ's death on the cross, God was able to declare boldly for all to see his boundless, matchless love for all mankind. There is no greater love than God's love. Hebrews 9.22 teaches us God will not pardon but without the blood. Without the shedding of Jesus' blood, we would have no salvation. Men, men can be redeemed but not without the blood. Peace can be enjoyed, but not without the blood. 
Justification can be obtained, but not without the blood. Sanctification can be experienced, but not without the blood. Glorification can be ours, but not without the blood. Whose blood? Jesus' blood. His death on the cross forever settled the sin debt of man. In closing, when the power of the blood and the cross is applied, three great and wonderful things take place. Sin dies. Hell is defeated. Heaven is delivered. That's my heart's desire. Heaven. I'm waiting for that day. Waiting for it, trying to wait for it patiently. But I'm not one with much patience. But God is teaching me to have patience. Has the blood been applied to your life? Is your name written down in heaven? Is your faith in Jesus and him alone? you're listening tonight, and of course, if you're here, you probably know, but if you're listening tonight, we are for uh, probably several Wednesday nights going to have some of the men preach that are, have been called to preach in this church, and, uh, and they want to, uh, I'm going to give you their phone number, so if you live in four states away, they can call you, and you know, yeah. you're supposed to laugh there, guys. <laughs> but uh, no, you know, if you're out there and you have a church or need an area and you need a preacher, we might have one for you. You never know. Uh, I'm not saying they would. That would be up between them and the Lord. But we're going to give these men a chance to preach. And, and uh, I'll tell you one thing, a chance to preach like that makes you, want, makes you study and makes you pray. Doesn't it, Brother Lutz? Yes. Gets you up at 1.30 in the morning, doesn't it? Amen. And I just want to tell you, I want to encourage you. I appreciate all the verses Amen. that he brought out tonight. Yep. And I mean that. And I want to encourage you, Brother Lutz. I want to tell you something right now. We love you and your wife. I don't, know how, I don't know how you got such a pretty wife, but you did. No, I got to aggravate you a little bit, but uh, appreciate that. Next Wednesday night, Brother Josh is going to be preaching. Who's going to be after that? Jim, you going to preach the next Wednesday night after that? You, you, okay, he'll be the night after that. All right, Phil, what night are you going to be? You don't know yet, huh? All right, well, Brother, I, I, I'll tell you somebody we need to hear preach, and that's Brother uh, uh, Helfrich. You haven't preached for us yet, have you? Huh? Well, you need to preach for us. How long are you guys going to be here? Jim, won't we get him in? And then you be next, all right? We'll be on two weeks from the night. Will you still be here? <laughs> you, have, you have to let me know, huh? Do you want to get in his spot next Wednesday night? He said he'd give you his spot. Yeah. Now you're in a box. <laughs> I mean, so, hey, I'm going to tell you something about this. We ain't having no preaching contest. Amen. That's not going to happen here. Amen. We just want men to have an opportunity. I'll tell you what, I, I got good out of that. It's good for me to sit and listen to preaching. I want to, hear, I want to hear your work. I want to hear your testimony. So you be here next Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. All righty. And uh, what they what? Now he did good. It's seven twenty-four. Now I'm going to tell y'all something. Some of you may think that's mean, but it's not. And you, I guarantee, in time, you in time, you'll know that this is good for you. Working that message down, trimming it down, getting it in there. What it does, it makes you, it makes you know. I got to keep trucking and get that power going, and 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 you just can't. You know, it makes you get to where you don't sit there and stop for five minutes and stuff. It'll get you working. That's what it'll do. And so I'm, I've got a reason in it, and I'm obeying the Lord about it, and it's all right. Okay. Well, anyway, let's have prayer time, and uh, we're going to do that. Thanks for listening online. Be in prayer for this. Be in prayer for this ministry.